You know what this is, don't you? It's just an ordinary, ready-to-be-cooked, sunny-side-up breakfast egg. I had one this morning. Maybe you did, too. Are all eggs alike? Well, some of them are bigger. Goose eggs are. And an ostrich egg is. And some of them are smaller. Robin's eggs are. And so are the chickadees. But they're all pretty much alike inside. There. They all have a yolk, which is that yellow part right in the middle, with some sticky white stuff around it. Now, not all eggs are like this one. Some of them are different. Some of them have something special inside. They have something growing inside. Here's one that did. Well, what is this coming out of an egg? Some kind of an animal. What kind of animal do you think it is? Mm-hmm, yes. Some kind of a bird, isn't it, with very wet feathers? Just about enough strength left to wiggle his head at that point. He takes a few deep breaths, and then what? Ah, he spreads his wings. But he's still not out of the egg yet, is he? few little peeps to let us know he's here. Oh, that's it. One more good push and he's out of the egg. Now, wasn't that exciting? We just saw a gosling hatch out of an egg. A gosling, you know, is a baby goose. And you saw how he got out. He pecked and wiggled and kicked and wriggled and fell flat on his face and then he rested while his feathers dried. The gosling started as something very small inside the egg. And where did the egg come from? From the mother goose. It came from inside her body. First she laid it, and then she sat on it for many days, keeping it warm until the baby goose inside was ready to hatch out. All kinds of animals start as something very small. Cats, dogs, mice, elephants. It happens all the time. But do all animals start from eggs the mother sits on? Do you think this mother cat sat on a nest of eggs? Have you ever seen kittens hatching out of eggs? <laughs> oh, mother. Well, neither have I. So where do you suppose the kittens came from six weeks ago? I'll give you a clue. Six weeks and one day ago, Mama was a very fat cat. Now I guess you know where those kittens were. They came from inside her body, where they were kept warm and safe. And here they are today, six weeks old. They still look tiny and helpless, don't they? And they still need their mother for warmth and food and protection. Let's stop and think for a moment what we have discovered so far. Some animals hatch or are born outside their mother's body. And some animals grow into babies inside their mother's body. What about you? Did you hatch from an egg like a gosling? Or did you grow inside your mother's body like a kitten? Nod your head if you knew that human babies grow 
inside their mother's body. Ah, okay. Yes, before you were born, you grew for nine months inside your mother's body. Not in her stomach, but in a hollow place called the uterus. In the beginning, you were a special cell. It was no bigger than a dot. Just about this size. Now something this size doesn't look like much, does it? But that's the wonder of it all. That from one tiny cell came something as big and wonderful as you. Now if we could look at that special cell under a microscope, this is what we would see. You can see the cell membrane around it and the nucleus in the center. After a day or two, this special cell divided and became two cells. And the two cells divided and became four cells, and so on. It kept on dividing this way until the clump of cells became a tiny, bumpy ball. And the ball was hollow and filled with water. It fastened itself to the inside of the uterus. It kept on growing more and more cells. About four weeks after it had started, the ball was about as big as a dime, except it wasn't round anymore. The ball had changed shape. It now looked something like a tadpole with a head and a tail. There was water all around it. You grew curled up in this water bed until the day you were born. When you had been growing for about five weeks, a tiny heart began to beat. Cells that would make arms and legs began to grow. Already, you see, your cells had different jobs to do. At the end of two months, you were still odd-looking, but you did begin to look more like a baby. You had arms and hands and fingers, and legs and feet and toes, but you were still very small. You were only as big as your thumb. By the time you had been growing for five months, you had been moving around inside the uterus for some time. But now your mother could feel you moving your arms and legs. You were now about ten inches long, just a little bigger than one of the kittens. But you still had a lot more growing to do. Two months before you were born, you were all wrinkled like a little old lady or a little old man. You could open your eyes and close them. You could find your mouth and suck your thumb. You were beginning to grow eyebrows and lashes and hair on your head. All your organs, inside and out, had grown into the things they were supposed to be. But you weren't ready to be born yet. You still needed to wait and grow. But no living things can grow without taking in food and air and getting rid of waste. How were you able to eat and breathe and get rid of waste inside your mother? Well, you didn't breathe through your nose or eat through your mouth the way you do now, but there was a way. It has something to do with that funny place here in the middle of your tummy, your belly button. Before you were born, that was part of a tube that connected you to your mother. Do you see the, that tube all curled up in there with the baby? You got your food and oxygen and got rid of waste through that tube, which was connected to your mother's bloodstream. Whatever went into her body could be taken into yours. And so you went on eating and sleeping and moving and growing inside your mother. You were getting fatter and stronger all the time. And finally, after nine months of growing from that one tiny cell, you were ready to come out into this exciting world. 
And what do you think was the first thing you did on that big day, your birthday? Yes, you gave a loud cry to let everyone know you had arrived and to take that first breath of air on your own. And probably the first person you met was the doctor. He did many things for you. He checked you all over very gently and carefully and listened to your heart to be sure that you were all right. When the doctor was through, there were many things a nurse did for you. To find out how big you were, she measured you. And then she put you on a scale to find out how much you weighed. She put a bracelet with your last name on it on your leg and another one on your wrist so that everyone would know who you were. She also took your footprint with an ink pad for the same reason. Everyone was being very careful that you wouldn't be mixed up with the other babies when you went to the nursery. You needed lots of care in the nursery. A nurse washed you all over to make you shiny clean. And then she put on your first diaper and wrapped you in soft, warm clothing. Her finishing touch was to pretty you up by brushing your hair. Getting born is hard work, and you were ready for a rest now. So she put you down to sleep in a little crib. And there you were, a new little human being, all ready to start on your way to growing up. Meanwhile, everyone was so anxious to meet you, especially your mother and father. Your mother couldn't wait to take you in her arms and hold you. Your mother and father couldn't take their eyes off you. They already loved you because you were theirs. Your father couldn't wait to hold you either. They were so proud of you. They wanted to tell everyone about you, how big you were, how tiny you were, how hungry you were, how sleepy you were, how loud you cried. Oh, and of course, how beautiful you were. And they also wanted to tell everybody your name. They were looking forward to the day when they could take you home and show you off some more. Now, you know something about the beginning of a very important person. Who? You! <laughs> All About You is a project of the Agency for Instructional Television.